Hello from Yuma, Arizona. If you're following us, uh, we left the Eastern Sierra and we're here now posting up for a new adventure. And today we're doing a five way oil transfusion on our Mitsubishi Fuso FG140. This is an amazing vehicle and we're changing all five oils in one shot to prepare for our next big adventure. We're also using a new camera. Yep, it's the DJI Pocket 2. It is itty bitty tiny and we're super excited to use this. It's our first video with it. I think our arm muscles might suffer a little because it's a few ounces compared to that giant gimbal we used to carry around, but no pressure on me to record this thing while you're doing the work with you, a new camera. But you're gonna be a priceless <laughs> resource because if I forget like, hey, the 19 millimeter, I don't have to crawl out from underneath the truck, go to my tool bag, and also you'll be able to get great angles and that lav mic will be able to maintain good audio through the entire process. I'm Rebecca and this is Ben. We're a couple of Alaskans with the dream of driving our expedition vehicle around the world. Unfortunately, COVID has closed international land travel, so we're making the most of things in our home country until the borders reopen. These films are produced with your support, the Outliers YouTube community. Click join on our channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more. So now we need to tilt the cab of the Fuso. And the critical thing here is to make sure that you have all of your junk out from behind here and on the floor because the last thing you want is say a set of binoculars coming down and busting your windshield now the easy part here see just pull that bring that up and right here there we go and it locks into place you want to talk about serviceability, this cab over engine design, that's where it's at. So it's time to get started. And we have five fluids here, which required four different errands, a few phone calls to my Fuso connections to figure things out. Uh, first off, let's start with the transfer case oil. This is a 90 weight gear oil. The manual called for GL3, but because GL3 has lead, they had to uh, switch it over and it's now GL4, but this is what works. So you can't find GL3 anymore. Now moving on, fortunately you guys are able to get a gallon of that just like this. This is GL5 8090 gear oil. This is for the front differential because we have four by four, obviously, because there's a transfer case. Next up is the rear differential, and this is limited slip, 80W90 GL5. The limited slip, there's like a friction modifier in there. It stinks to you know what. So I'm going to do this one last in case I get any of it on me. Now we have generic O'Reilly's motor oil, 30 weight, straight 30 weight. And this is for the manual transmission. Pretty slick, just a straight motor oil for the transmission. Now for the engine, this we get at Walmart. It's the Mobile Delvac 1300 Super 15W40. And it's only about 11 to $13, depending on where you live. But beauty of this truck is it takes precisely three gallons on the mark. Okay, I'm gonna do this in a very strategic order. The uh, drain and the fill for the transfer case and manual transmission here, they require a gasket maker on the threads, which needs one hour of uh, drying time before we add fluid to it. And the socket for most of the work on these is an inch and one sixteenth. I know this is a Japanese vehicle, so there's probably a metric number, but this is what I have and it is a very good fit. So this is the bottom drain. Oh, okay. I just wanted to break it free there. This is where you fill it and get on there. Okay. Okay. Broke that one free. Now on the transfer case, 
This is the fill. Okay. And I don't have a torque wrench. You're supposed to torque these back down, but I'm just kind of remembering. Okay, that one's, gonna, uh, whew, that one's got a little more torque on it, but I'm just remembering roughly about how tight they are. First up, the manual transmission. And let's undo the fill. Okay. Huh, that's funny. I don't really see any gasket maker on those threads. Quite interesting. Okay, so there's fluid coming out of the fill. Okay, and now enough is drained off here. Okay, Oop, there it is. And I'm going to take a look at this because there's a magnet on here which uh, is indicative if you have transmission problems there's going to be excess material on it all right let's wipe this off there's some light material on there but no big metal chunks that's very very good because that means our transmission is in good shape Okay, the transmission is still mildly draining. And let's get a jump on the transfer case. Oh, okay. So no fluid came out of the fill mark. Okay, there we go. And just like the uh, transmission, there's a magnet on this one. There's some material on it, but there's obviously always going to be some mild material on these don't stress about that too much you're looking for hard chunks of metal that's when you're having a bad day but this so far looks really good and makes me feel good at least the interesting thing here is the transfer case drain plug did have that gasket maker stuff and this is what i'm talking about the uh permatex and got the ultra black there's many styles of this really good stuff used to use it a lot back in my volkswagen days okay little brake cleaner make sure we're ready to close things up okay i'm gonna go through and put some of this gasket maker on the threads not too much just enough okay let's plug up this transmission get that threading in nice and smooth running it down with my fingers and just snug it up for now and next up the transfer case over here and we're gonna get that okay and the drain for the transfer case is in. You know, since this is theoretically not coming off again, I'm gonna hand tighten it and then get on it with that socket. That feels about right. So yeah, a torque wrench really does come in handy, but not always necessary. And now on to the transfer case. Theoretically, this one's not coming out again. Let's give that. Okay, that feels good enough for me. All right, I'm gonna open the oil and pull the dipstick out to relieve the pressure on the oil so we can drain it properly. Okay, let's drain the engine oil. A 17 millimeter wrench. Oh gosh, that's tighter. Oh, whoo. Then I remember putting it on last time. Funny how that works. So we're just gonna pull it out. This truck is nice because it's so high off the ground. <laughs> a five gallon bucket is great for uh, doing oil changes. Let's see. Here. Hey, there we go. That's the right tightness for a oil filter. Okay. There, okay, and oh 
bottom. There we go. Let some of that drain out. Okay, just wipe off the oil filter mount. Make sure you're not gonna double gasket anything. Take a little bit of that oil and finger it onto the new seal. Okay, so comes in contact and then about three quarters of a turn is what the old industry standard is, I believe. Oil filter's done. Okay, the 17 millimeter. Just, that should be good. Oil's been drained now. Okay, let's tackle the front differential. This is the fill plug. Well, oh, that's tight. Oh my. I don't know. Oh, oh. Okay. Now for the drain. My goodness. Oh. Whew. Did I get it? Yep, I got it. Close. Okay, here we go. And wow, that is clean. I can still see through that. That is a great sign. Now, let's undo this fill here. It's draining nicely. No major chunks of metal. That's all bad, bad stuff. Okay, I'm gonna put the drain back in and keep in mind, when I was looking at my manual here, this does not need that gasket maker along with the rear differential. Okay, that's as tight as I'm gonna go. I don't think it needed to be quite as tight as it was. Okay, moving on to the rear differential and doing the, oh, goodness gracious. Okay, let's try a different angle here. Whew. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, rear differential fill. Get the other tight. <laughs> that booger's on there. <clears throat> yeah. I knew that was a risk. Did Didn't break, them? break my glasses or no? I don't think so. Oh. I might have a black eye though. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, you have a cut. You're bleeding. Really? Okay. Really, like, you need to do something so we're not bleeding all over the ground. Well, here, let me get this on. No, it's already bleeding into your eye. Really? Yeah, into your eyebrows. Okay, let me get this real quick. That must hurt. Yes, it did. Oh, we have little problem here, Houston. Looks like at some point, I don't think we've ever hit, but Somebody did. yeah, I don't remember. I'd remember Snack hitting that. Tired. Well, can you hand me a big screwdriver, please? Let's see here. It's kind of boogered up. Battery's almost dead on the camera. Sounds like I need to get bandaged up and I'm going to need a few minutes to bugger with this. How's your noggin feeling there? Back in business, eh? Looks, it's yeah. very becoming on you. All right. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to take my word that I got it off because I did. It was a little buggered up. Somebody in this vehicle's previous years had hit something that... Uh, kind of made it a little buggered up on the edges so the socket didn't want to go on. Okay, that's tight enough for me. Okay, time to fill things up. We're using the limited slip oil here and pumping it in. Uh, the owner's manual says 4.8 quarts. So we got five. 
Okay, decided to ditch the pump and just cut the tips off these. That pump was not pumping quite as well as I would have liked it. Okay, this is the last little bit. We're running out the hole there. Let's tighten up this fill one. Gonna make it tight, but not quite what I was dealing with on the disassemble part. Little brake clean to clean up the area. Okay, moving on to the, oh, hey, don't stick on me, front differential. I kind of have no choice but to use the pump here because I bought a gallon. Uh, the front differential's capacity is 3.2 quarts, but trying to save money, the uh, gallon here was a better value. So I got a ways to go. Got a lot of pumping to do. I haven't even gone down a court yet. Okay, this is the home stretch. There it is. It is, ooh, hey, wow, it's full. We reached our 3.2 quarts, honey. Plug up the fill hole. That's tight enough for me. All right, front differential done. Moving on to the transfer case, we need 3.3 quarts and I purchased a gallon and it's time to start pumping. Okay, this is being a bugger. Thing kind of came apart on me. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, we are nearing the home stretch for the transfer case. I'm pretty sure as soon as I pull this out, there's going to be, oh, well, just wonderful. Okay, screw you. Just get in there. Okay, that's good enough for Benny. Okay, moving on to filling up the manual transmission. And this one's going to be so joyous because it's going to take 3.8 quarts. But with what I have here, I have to hold the bottle up, make sure the hose doesn't come out, and pump at the same time. Okay, this is the home stretch. I can already see a little oil starting to dribble out there. Plug it up. Tighten it up. That's good enough for Benny. Okay, last but not least, three gallons of engine oil. I have to say, I love the fact that this thing literally takes three gallons on the mark. After enough oil changes, you don't even have to measure it anymore. It's so convenient. I'm guessing it's gonna read a little full because the oil filter is still empty. We are good. Let's button this show up. Well, we're not done yet. Uh, we have to grease things up. I do this every single time we change the oil. It's not a fuel filter uh, change time. I do that every other oil change. So roughly every 12,000 miles. A little pro tip I wanna share with you. These are the Earth Cruiser Parabolic Leaf Springs. So they're an aftermarket upgrade. The previous owner had this work done in Bend, Oregon, and they really didn't last much more than 30, 40,000 miles. And they were kind of worn when we bought the truck. But come to find out, because on our way south, we stopped by Bend and dropped enough money, <laughs> like over a grand, to uh, have them put the new leaf spring bushings up here. But the trick is, I learned that you need to use a silicone grade grease, not a regular good old fashioned traditional grease like I'm gonna show you for the drive line and the uh, other suspension components. So now we need to carry two grease guns, but fortunately it's a small one for this because it really is only for these front leaf spring bushings. 
each spring has three zerk fittings the rear by this shackle there's two and then up front there's one thank you so while i'm down here <laughs> so you don't get up and down more than necessary i am going to grease the drive line and oh gosh i'm gonna guess there's about seven or so zerk fittings throughout the entire drive line that need to be maintained so you need to look in all the nooks and crannies got a zerk fitting in there zerk fitting there you got two right there but yeah it is a critical maintenance item all right sun's gone down everything's good under here so i'm gonna lift up on this a little and then gently drop it down and then lock it into place make sure the uh, snorkel for the air filter is good make sure all these safety catches are uh, doing their job let's start the engine okay ignition on we'll let her idle for a bit okay that is a wrap thank you good job appreciate your help not too worse for wear the truck got all its maintenance i don't know how we looking here um just a little cut yeah if we'll survive all right battle wounds Bye. okay got an adventure coming up make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the road we always like to thank our outliers community for supporting production of these videos you guys are the best. Click join on our YouTube channel for early releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more.